Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about another feature of the 2021 Release Wave 1. This one is actually for Dynamics 365 customer service. This feature was not in the early release, so I haven't really had a lot of details on it, but it just came out last week, so I wanted to share it with you guys. I'm going to show you how you can configure knowledge search filters and how to set the default authoring languages for knowledge base articles. All right, so let's dive right in. But before I'm going to show you where you can configure this, let's first talk a little bit about what exactly this is. So as you might know, prior to this update, administrators were not able to configure filters for knowledge base articles, which makes it kind of tricky, right? If you have added your own custom fields to the knowledge article table. So for example, I actually added, let me actually go down here to knowledge articles and then I'll show you. I actually added a field to knowledge articles and that's a field that I also use. Let me just go ahead and go to missing parts that I also have on my case form. So let's go back here to summary. So you can see here, this subcategory field, parts missing, is a field that I added both to the case table and to the knowledge article table. But currently, if I'm going to, for example, knowledge search or to open a case to access the knowledge search on the case form or wherever else I have set up this, this type of knowledge search, I actually cannot add my custom fields. So let me just go ahead and search for a knowledge article. So currently, if I click here on my filter, I can only filter on these fields, source, status, visibility, modified on, and language, right? I can just go ahead and say, okay, what is my source? What is the status of these articles, etc. So that's kind of what this feature is doing, right? What we can do now is we can remove some of these default filters or turn them off or, or right, whatever. And, but we can also add our own custom filters. So in order to do that, you will have to navigate here to service management. And then if you scroll down under knowledge base management, you have to go to settings. And then if you scroll down, you can see here that knowledge articles search filters can be, oops, can be enabled over here by default. This will be set to no, this guy as well. So as soon as you change this setting and you're going to set this enable custom filters to yes, then now you can see an additional option to allow agents to personalize the knowledge articles search filters themselves as well. Right, so this is all that you have to do. So let's just go ahead and save that. And then let's now set up some custom filters. So I'm gonna go, oops, I'm actually now gonna go here to filters. This is a new sitemap item that we have here. So these are some of the filters that are already available, right? Status, visibility, and modified on. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and make some changes to that, I can do that. So if I click here on visibility, I can here basically check which ones are going to be visible, right? For the agent to filter on. If I don't want them to filter on archived, discarded and draft and expired, then I'm not going to show those filters. I can also set my pre-selects here, right? If I want that to already be a filter, I can just go ahead and change that. Now both of those are pre-selected. And then again, I can hit done and that's it. If I want to remove this filter altogether, I can just click on deactivate. I'm actually not going to do that by status. I'm going to do that here for this visibility. They're only going to get, uh, let's say, you know what? I just want to deactivate it. I'm going to get rid of it altogether and I'm going to get rid of language as well. Deactivate. 
So that's how you can kind of edit and you can kind of deactivate some of these filters as well. Now, if you want to add a filter, you can do that very easily, obviously. Let's just say, oh gosh, these are not really good fields that we have here. Let's just do expiration date and then you click add. And then again, you can pre-select, right? So let's just do expiration date in the last seven days, 30 days, seven days, all of them, right? You can just go ahead and just select done and you just added a filter. Now you just saw earlier that I had that subcategory field and that's a look up to another table. So look what happens if I actually select that subcategory. I'm going to click add and now it's going to add, ask me, okay, which ones should be options in this field? Well, I'm going to say, I'm actually going to change my view and this is going to be active child case types. And then you can just select which ones you want to use in there as options. Let's get rid of that one. Let's click on add. And these are now my options. And then you can do the same thing, right? Which one do you want to pre-select? And you just couldn't hit done. Now, remember that I said earlier, there was another option for users to set their own filters. Well, I thought you would have to go here to personalization settings. Um, that's not correct. It's actually somewhere different. If you go back here to service and then you can see here knowledge personalization that's where you need to go as an agent to set up your filters so again you can click over here deactivate the filter or set your pre-selects and look at that those filters that i deactivated the language and the other one you can see that i don't have those to choose from anymore right so they're gone and then here for my subcategory, I can do the same thing. I can deactivate it because this is a custom filter that I added and notice how this one can be deactivated as well. Oh, actually all of them can be deactivated. Perfect. So if there's something on here that you're not using, let's say I'm going to say, you know, what, I'm not using expiration date. So let me deactivate that one. I'm just using those three filters, right? I'm going to save and close that. And now I'm going to go back to knowledge search. And again, let me do issue and go to my filter. And you can see here are my new filters. And then I can just go ahead and start clicking on those, filtering by those. And that's kind of how that works. All right. So there was another option and that's actually how to turn on the default authoring language for knowledge articles. And this is again on a per user basis, right? So let me show you that. We're going to go back to service management. Again, I'm going to go to settings. And if I scroll down here, it says whether or not you want to set the default article authoring language for users. And I'm going to say that I'm going to say yes. And then once you do that, you have another couple of options. Do you want to set the default knowledge authoring language for all your users to the organization's UI language? And if you say uh, no, then you can actually pick another language from here, right? I can just go ahead and browse and I can pick a different language or I can leave this to yes. And then obviously it's just going to grab that org's uh, UI language. And then another option here, the final option here, again, do we want users to be able to set their own default knowledge authoring language? Yes or no. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now let's again, go back to service. We're going to go to the same place, which is the knowledge personalization. And you can see here that I'm currently on filters, but we also have an authoring option. So when you click on that, this is where you can set your default language. If you want to use your orgs language, you can leave this to yes, or you can set your own language. Let's just go ahead and go with Dutch here, Netherlands, 
and I'm going to save that. Now, keep in mind, this is just going to show your knowledge authoring language, which means that as soon as I'm going to create a new article, let's go ahead and do that. It will set the language, as you can see here, to Dutch. That's what that does. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Take care, everybody.